Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kelvin from Make3DComics.com and BlackSunComics.com. And this is part five of my tutorial series entitled Character Creation in Daz Studio. In this video, we'll be discussing clothing characters using AutoFit. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so let's begin with the disclaimer. I just want to let you know that what I'm about to present in this video is my process for character creation. It's by no means the only way to do it. So as you watch, make sure that you leverage the information that's going to be relevant to your own personal workflow and just disregard anything else that's not gonna work for your own personal workflow. Previously, what I discussed was how to transfer legacy morphs and legacy meaning Victoria 4 and Michael 4 morphs to Genesis. If you haven't seen that video, click the link here to watch it. Otherwise, let's begin. So what is AutoFit? AutoFit is software that comes bundled with Daz Studio, and basically it allows you to use legacy clothing uh, with the Genesis 1 base figure. Now I've never used it with Genesis 2 or Genesis 3, so if anyone out there has used it, inform us and let us know using the comment section below uh, how AutoFit works. If they've changed it, I, I don't know, so I don't I can't really speak to it. Um, AutoFit is great; it works very well. The only issue is poke through. So, what is poke through? Poke through is when the character's skin can be seen through the clothing, and it looks like this. Here's an example of a glove that I've tried to fit to a character that I've created, and you see it looks janky. Looks like everything has been ripped, and it's very annoying. So luckily with the Genesis base figure, there's an easy way to fix issues of poke through, which I'm going to get to later on in this video. Uh, what I'm going to do now, the, the next part of this video will be in two sections. I'm going to discuss AutoFit in two parts. The first part is a step-by-step -step process of how to use AutoFit with Genesis 1. And then next I'm going to do an over-the-shoulder walkthrough so you can see my process for how I clothe the character from the start. So let's begin. So now I'm going to go through the process of fitting some clothes to this Genesis character uh, using AutoFit. So the one that I'm going to pick is an item that I know that was made for Michael 4. And this will serve as a good example. So I'm just going to my content library. I'm in, under my figures uh, folder. And I'm scrolling down to this Night World, Midnight Hunter, and then Clothes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this shirt, right, that was made for Michael 4. And I'm going to fit it to this Genesis character that has Victoria 4 shapes on it. So this goes to show how versatile uh, the AutoFit tool is. So what I do is double click on the shirt. And you'll notice it pops up over here. So it's not even attached to the character. But that's okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is right click on the shirt and from this drop down menu that appears what you want to select is fit shirt to. Right so the way I got that drop down menu is I right click on the shirt so I'll do that again. I've double clicked on it the shirt appears. I'm going to right click on the shirt. Let's try that again. There we go right click and I'm going to select fit shirt to. Once I click that, this fit to dialog box shows up. And basically, I'm going to target what I want to fit the shirt to. In this case, it's Genesis. So I click that and I hit accept. And it looks all janky, but that's okay. It's not done. This other auto fit shirt dialog box, dialog box appears. And I have two drop down menus that I have to um, populate with information. So what figure was the item originally originally designed for? In this case, I know it was designed for Michael 4. So I'm going to select Michael 4. And what type of item is it? It's a, a shirt. So you'll see I have a number of options, bodysuit, boots, dress, gloves, etc., etc. So I'm going to go to shirt and select tight and then accept. Okay, so it's fit the shirt, but you'll notice there's poke through, right? My, my favorite poke through. But the good thing is that poke through is not that difficult to fix. So I'm going to go to my scene tab 
and I'm going to select the, the shirt. So that's it here. I selected the shirt from the scene tab. And then from this little icon here, I'm not even sure what that's called. If anyone knows what that is, you know, let me know. I'm going to click that. And from the drop down menu, I'm going to go to edit. Then I'm going to go to geometry. Then I'm going to move across and go to apply smoothing modifier. All right, so I know that's a lot of steps, so we'll, we'll go through that again real quick. So make sure you have this, the, the shirt selected. Uh, I'm in my scene tab, so I selected the shirt from my scene tab. I go to this little icon doohickey thing here, click that, find edit. Whoops, scroll over and go to geometry. And then scroll down and select apply smoothing modifier. And you'll notice that happened really quick, but it got rid of all the, the poke through. All right, so there's none there. And that's basically how easy it is to fix legacy. Oh, well, there's a little bit here. But I, I can live with that. That's something I could fix in Photoshop using the clone tool. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of what I do is uh, I fix things in post production. I, I I don't worry too much about what happens here in Daz. Uh, and this is just um, you'll see here. I just need to move this out. So if I select that arm and go to parameters. Take that out a bit. There we go. All right, so that's how you use AutoFit. So now we'll get into the second part of the video where what I've done is recorded myself putting clothes on this character. And what I'm doing now, I'm just going to speed up the video and I'm going to narrate what I'm doing so that you can kind of understand my mindset, my thought process behind doing what it is that I'm doing. So this is where we left off from the last video. Uh, she's wearing this bodysuit, which is fine, but I, I want to change it. So I'm deleting it. And now what I'm going to do is go to my smart content tab, which I happen to have on the left side of my screen and see what there is that I can um, use. So I found this yellow shirt and, and actually to be quite honest with you, I don't even remember purchasing it. So I said, let me try this because it looks kind of cool. Didn't really fit. So I'm attempting to use auto fit. I'm also attempting to use the smoothing modifier um, to, to fix the clothing, but for some reason it's not working. I'm not sure if this original model was for Michael 4 or Victoria 4 or some other legacy character. I I don't know, because again, I said I, I don't really remember purchasing it. So I believe this is the third time I'm trying to fit it to Genesis and it's still not working. I, I don't like that result, so... Okay, I guess I'm giving it the old college try. One more time and no. Okay, so I'm trying something new now. Going to my wardrobe tab. Well, I was in the wardrobe tab, but now I've gone to the uh, figures tab and just kind of scrolling through. So I came across this dress. That looked kind of interesting. Remember, I'm just freestyling this. I don't really have uh, an end goal in mind. I'm just seeing what comes up. But I, I found this dress that I purchased a while ago. Hadn't used it, so I figured I would use it on this character just to, to see what happens. And so far, I'm liking the way it looks. And now I'm just going through my own content library to see if there's anything else that I can add to this. It's very rare that I will just use clothes just as they are. I like the process of kit bashing. And what that means is just taking bits and pieces from different 3D models and meshing them together to, uh, to create something new. So it looks like I'm adding sandals to her. And I'm just going through my content library again. Let's see, what am I looking for? Oh, underwear. So the underwear was originally for Victoria 4. I'm using auto fit so that it fits to Genesis. And I'm looking for my surface tool because I want to change the color from red to black. And then I'm just turning on the dress again. And I usually do these 360 turns just to make sure that everything looks the way that I want it to. 
Now I'm looking for more things that I can add. And again, just scrolling through my content library. I actually wish there was a way to get this legacy content to appear in the smart content tab, like all the products that I purchased for, uh, purchased from Daz Studio for, for Genesis. Okay, so it looks like I'm adding some wristbands or bracers to her. Kind of goes with the whole look of the dress. Figured I'd add the necklace too. And again, I'm just using AutoFit. AutoFit is an amazing tool. It, it takes such headache, takes a lot of the headaches out of trying to fit clothes to a character. Back when I was using Victoria 4 and Michael 4, I would always get poked through or something would go wrong and I have to spend all this time just trying to fit the clothes to the character and it never really worked until I got Genesis and now I just use auto fit and it makes it very easy. Uh, I was playing with this helmet, helmet, crown, headdress, what, whatever, but I, I guess I decided I don't like it. So I deleted it. Again, this is all trial and error. I don't have a specific end goal in mind. I'm just seeing what I can come up with. Well, let, let me correct that. So my end goal is that everything kind of meshes together and it looks like a cohesive uh, wardrobe for this particular character. So you just don't pick and choose anything because not anything goes together. You're trying to look for things, for items of clothing that uh, complement each other so that it looks like it was one outfit that, that you purchased from from wherever, the Daz store, or Renderosity, or some other 3D content uh, store that's out there. So again, here I am making decisions, just scrolling through, taking inventory of what I have, and looking for anything that might complement this particular wardrobe. Here I am toying with the idea of a crown again. This is a Kemetic or Egyptian type crown. Looks okay, but... I decided that I don't really like it, so I just deleted the headdress, I deleted that uh, that Egyptian crown there, and what am I doing now? Again, I'm just looking for things. Oh, so I decided that the character will have cybernetic arms, but you notice that the skin color on one of the arms doesn't match, so I just decided to make the cybernetic arms um, applicable to both of her arms. And I, I could go, if I wanted to, I could go through and match the color. There, there's ways to do that using the, the surface selection tool, but I, I didn't feel like doing all that for this video. I, I don't even know if this is a character that I'm going to use. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Now I'm doing a spot render to, to see, and what I'm not liking is the clash of colors. There's, there's a bit too much going on. So now I'm using my surface selection tool and I'm selecting certain specific parts of the, the dress to change the color. So I'm making parts of the, the dress black. And you'd be surprised, just changing the color of things can really change the whole look of a, of a costume. And this is what I also meant by I rarely use... Um, I rarely use a wardrobe. I rarely use a product just as it comes out of, uh, what am I saying? Total brain freeze. I always adjust whatever I purchase. I never use it as is. That's what I meant to say. So I think I'm coming to about the end of it here. This looks a bit more cohesive. I like the, the contrast of the red and the black. And then the cybernetic arms as well. And that's it for now. So that concludes my tutorial series on character creation in Daz Studio. I hope you learned some great tips and techniques that you can use for your own projects. As for what's next, well, you'll just need to stay tuned and see. I'll probably answer some of the questions that my subscribers have asked me. So please be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, please visit BlackSunComics.com where you can download a free preview of our first book, The Longest Night. The whole book is also available for purchase as well. If you liked what you saw, please click like and subscribe. Be sure to check out some of the other videos on my channel. And until next time, take care. Peace.